Red rocks and craters can be seen as far as the eye can perceive from Earth when looking towards Mars. This is largely in line with what researchers anticipated when they set down the Perseverance rover in the Jezero crater, a location selected in part due to the crater's past as a lake and a significant river system, back when Mars had liquid water, air and a magnetic field. As soon as the rover touched down, it discovered shocking things. Scientists have found a variety of unexpected dynamics about Mars during the course of the decades of research using orbiters, landers and rovers. What new Martian scientific discoveries are radically changing how we view the planet? Does it also have anything to do with the prospect of Mars supporting human habitation in the future? Let's find out. On September 5, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope took its first pictures and spectra of Mars. The telescope, a result of an international partnership involving NASA, ESA and the Canadian Space Agency, complements data being gathered by orbiters, rovers and other telescopes by offering a distinctive perspective on our neighbouring planet with its infrared sensitivity. A view of Mars's observable disk is provided by Webb's unique observation station at the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 2, L2. It is located nearly 1.5 million kilometers away, the portion of the sunlit side that is facing the telescope. Because of this, Webb is able to take photos and spectra with the spectral resolution required to investigate short-lived phenomena like dust storms, weather patterns, seasonal changes and in a single observation, processes that happen at different times of the day, sunset and night on Mars. The red planet is one of the brightest objects in the night sky in terms of both visible lights, which can be seen by human eyes, and the infrared light that Webb is designed to detect. This is because it is so close by. This presents unique difficulties for the observatory, which was designed to pick up the incredibly feeble light from the universe's most remote galaxies. Without appropriate observation methods, Webb's equipment is so sensitive that the intense infrared light from Mars blinds users, a condition known as detector saturation. By employing very brief exposures, detecting only a portion of the light that reaches the detectors, and using specialized data analysis methods, astronomers were able to compensate for Mars's extraordinary brightness. The near-infrared camera, NearCam, on Webb's initial Mars photos shows a section of the planet's eastern hemisphere in two different infrared light colors or wavelengths. The spectrum displays the subtle variations in brightness between hundreds of different wavelengths that are representative of the planet as a whole, as opposed to the Mars images, which show differences in brightness integrated over a large number of wavelengths from location to location across the planet at a specific day and time. To learn more about the surface and atmosphere of the planet, astronomers will examine the spectrum's characteristics. In the future, Webb will investigate regional variations across the planet and look for trace species in the atmosphere, such as methane and hydrogen chloride, utilizing these imaging and spectroscopic data. In the meantime, the Perseverance Mars rover found rocks on Mars that are comparable to the ones that give Hawaiian beaches their green hue. The rover, Percy, was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida in July 2020, and it arrived at Jezero Crater in February 2021. Jezero Crater is a 28-mile-wide former lake bed that was chosen for its potential to aid researchers in understanding Mars's wet past. The project, which will last for years, aims to learn whether life has ever existed on Mars, to comprehend the mechanisms and evolution of its climate, comprehend Mars's genesis and geologic evolution, and get ready for manned exploration. Scientists expected to uncover sedimentary rock, which would have formed when sand and mud settled in a once watery environment, since the crater hosted a lake billions of years ago, when Perseverance started studying rocks on the floor of the Jezero crater. Instead, they found that the floor was composed of two different types of igneous rock, one created by volcanic activity on the surface and the other by the formation of magma deep down. 
Crystals found in igneous rocks serve as effective timekeepers by preserving information about the precise moment of formation. That's fantastic news for researchers who can now date the formation of Jezero's lake and charts Mars's progression to its present-day climate of extreme aridity and cold. Igneous rock isn't very good at keeping potential traces of ancient microscopic life, though, because of the way it forms. In contrast, sedimentary rock is, which is why the rover has been drilling and collecting samples from the sediment-rich river delta of Jezero. Sedimentary rock frequently forms in watery environments that are favourable to life. Impact of meteorites, eruptions of volcanoes, or sand-making procedures. For many years, researchers have speculated about SETAR, a huge rock formation on Mars that covers a vast surface area. The old mystery seems to have been solved by Perseverance. The NASA crew was able to examine the chemical and texture of an exposed section of the rock using abrasion and X-ray equipment on the rover. The olivine's grain size was found to be far greater than what would be predicted for olivine that developed in a fast-cooling lava at the planet's surface. Instead, they think that the olivine was first exposed over time by erosion after being created far underground from magma that was cooling very slowly. The mineralogy and chemistry resemble that of Martian meteorites we found on Earth, although their chemistry and mineralogy are slightly different, Udry said. However, meteorites, the only samples that we currently possess from Mars, do not have any ground truth context. Being able to analyze and date these Martian rocks in Earth-based laboratories while having for the first time field context from Martian rocks will allow us to better ascertain the magmatic evolution of the Red Planet and, ultimately, help us compare Mars to Earth's interior. Perseverance discovered that water affected minerals in the crater floor rocks using near-infrared light, the first instrument on Mars with that capability. The changes aren't extensive, but Udry and Hausrath claim the discovery supports the idea that the planet originally supported life-sustaining water. The NASA team also fired a laser at 1,450 spots using the SuperCam instrument, which can zap a target as small as a pencil tip from 20 feet away, and then used a visible light spectrometer to analyze the resultant plasma to identify the chemical makeup of the rocks. The rocks were also older than they had anticipated. The Perseverance rover's geology team determined that these rocks were older than 4 billion years after closely examining them with SuperCam. On Earth, our environment would weather down rocks that are old. However, they are practically untouched on Mars, making them easier to analyze. It may seem weird to find green sand on Mars, but that is exactly what a team led by professors at Purdue University discovered in pictures taken by the Perseverance spacecraft. The greenish igneous rocks were discovered in Jezero. The data gathered by Perseverance has been examined by hundreds of researchers, and they contend that perhaps the red planet isn't as red as we assume. Because most of Mars's rocks that are exposed to the outside environment are red in color, it is known as the red planet. They include iron that oxidizes and turns reddish, much like any iron object on Earth rusts and turns red when exposed to the elements. Surprisingly, the majority of the rocks in the Jezero crater are distinct from the sedimentary rocks that can be found on the surface of Mars. Persistence discovered large-sized olivine grain-filled volcanic rocks in the crater. Due to the presence of the aforementioned olivine, a mineral that is prevalent in the Earth's mantle and plays a role in the creation of the gemstone Peridot, many beaches on Earth have a greenish look. The dark green hue of the beaches of Hawaii and Mars can both be attributed to olivine. On Mars, though, its antiquity makes it even more unique, particularly as a lab for comprehending the operations of the early solar system. Rocks rich in olivine may hold the key to answering questions like, did Mars ever support life? In addition, it offers a fascinating glimpse into what the early Earth would have been like at the time life first emerged on the planet over 4 billion years ago. 
Our knowledge of the environment on Earth at that time is gone since the climate and tectonic movements over millions of years transformed it irreparably. But until Perseverance discovered it, the Martian landscape had largely stayed unchanged. Scientists think that the volcanic rocks found on Mars formed roughly 4 billion years ago. The rocks are interesting because they resemble the igneous rocks that were present on Earth at the beginning of its history. Rock samples from the time the planet was formed are necessary for scientists to research the ancient environment of a planet. According to Dr. Bryony Horgan, one of the authors and associate professor at Purdue University's Department of Earth, Atmospheric and Planetary Sciences, one of the reasons we don't have a great understanding of where and when life first evolved on Earth is that those rocks are mostly gone. So, it's really hard to reconstruct what ancient environments on Earth were like. Mars is thought to be 4.6 billion years old and fortunately, Perseverance has found the site of the ancient lava samples needed to investigate the planet's early environment in the form of olivine-rich igneous rocks. In earlier research on Martian meteorites, olivine was also suggested to exist on the red planet. The mineral was thought to only be found in places like Ganges Chasma and Nili Fossae. According to geologists, the presence of olivine in the Jezero crater has never been conclusively proven. The origin and lithology of Jezero's crater floor were vigorously contested before the landing of Perseverance, whether igneous, lava flows or pyroclastic or sedimentary, noted the scientists. There is a good chance that researchers will be able to determine whether there has ever been life on the Red Planet by analyzing the rover's data and perhaps one day looking at the rocks here on Earth. The old volcanic rocks, which are as old as our solar system, may also provide insight into the origins of life on Earth and how we should continue in our search for evidence of extraterrestrial life. The initial step only entails locating the rocks and performing a preliminary investigation. Before anything definitive regarding the ecology of the Jezero crater earlier in the solar system and whether it may have been livable can be said. A further thorough investigation is required. But it is one of Perseverance's top priorities, along with that of its devoted geology team. This discovery is a positive development. Additionally, the NASA InSight spacecraft detects the first meteorite impacts on Mars. Seismic signals from four space pebbles that impacted Mars in 2020 and 2021 have been discovered by NASA's InSight lander. This is the first time seismic and acoustic waves from impacts have been detected on Mars. And these impacts are the first ones the spacecraft's seismometer has picked up since InSight landed there in 2018. The new discovery describes the impacts, which occurred between 85 and 290 kilometers, that's 53 to 180 miles, from InSight site in the Elysium Planitia region of Mars. The most spectacular entry was made by the first of the four confirmed meteoroids, which is the term for space rocks before they impact the ground. It entered Mars's atmosphere on September 5, 2021, exploding into at least three shards that each left a crater in its wake. The impact site's position was then verified by a flight by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter over the area. Three darkish areas on the surface were visible thanks to the orbiter's context camera in black and white. The team behind the orbiter found these sites and then used the High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment Camera, or HiRISE, to obtain a close-up color photograph of the craters. More craters may have been left on the surface, but they would have been too small to be seen in HiRISE's images. Why there haven't been more meteoroid collisions on Mars has baffled researchers. The primary asteroid belt of the solar system is just next to the Red Planet, which means there are enough space rocks nearby to scour the planet's surface. More meteoroids pass through Mars's atmosphere unharmed, since it is only 1% as thick as Earth's. The InSight team speculates that other consequences might have been hidden by wind noise or seasonal atmospheric shifts. But now that the particular seismic signature of a Mars impact has been identified, 
Researchers anticipate finding more in the almost four years of InSight data. Seismic data provide numerous hints that will improve researchers' understanding of the red planet. The majority of Mars quakes are triggered by pressure and heat-induced breaking of underlying rocks. Scientists can analyze Mars's crust, mantle and core by observing how the resulting seismic waves alter as they pass through various materials. The four meteoroid strikes that have been confirmed so far all resulted in minor earthquakes with a maximum magnitude of 2.0. While seismic signals from larger quakes like the magnitude 5 event that happened in May 2022 can also provide information about the planet's mantle and core, smaller quakes only give scientists a view into the Martian crust. However, the impacts will be crucial for adjusting the time frame for Mars. By counting the number of impact craters present on a planet's surface, scientists can determine the age of the planet's surface. Scientists can then determine how many more impacts occurred earlier in the solar system's history by calibrating their statistical models depending on how frequently they observe impacts happening right now. A meteoroid's course and shockwave size may be recreated using information from InSight and orbital pictures. Every meteoroid produces an explosion when it strikes the Earth and a shockwave when it strikes the atmosphere. Sound waves from these incidents travel across the atmosphere. When this sound wave reaches InSight, the ground is tilted more dramatically the larger the explosion. The seismometer on the lander is sensitive enough to measure how much and in what direction the ground tilts as a result of such an occurrence. The lander has more time to investigate Mars. The lander's solar panels are losing power due to dust accumulation, which will eventually cause the spacecraft to shut down. It is challenging to predict with accuracy when the lander will shut down, but based on the most recent power assessments, engineers currently think that it may happen between now and January 2023. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.